you really have to find your own reason for doing what you're doing and your own value in it mm -hmm. for a lot of reasons. But Jimmy is a guy who can't do that, at least not as far as you've seen him so far. Yeah. And uh, and that's a, that creates problems for him. What's up, everyone? Tanya here with popculture.com, and I'm so excited to welcome the creative minds behind the new Audible original scripted comedy podcast, Summer in Argyle, co-created and written by Nate and Bob Odenkirk. Fellas, thank you so much for joining us today. Hi. Hi. <laughs> so, um, you know, before we get to the Audible original, I have to ask, what is your favorite style of hot dog? Nate, you go first. Oh, I love, I love Chicago style. Yeah. Done. I would have thought. Yeah. Bob? And you're muted. <laughs> Hi, it's Bob Odenkirk. Mm -hmm. And I love a hot dog at the park with just mustard. Mm -hmm. And also as well, at the same time, I would like to have a Chicago style hot dog, but with um, pepperoncini peppers, not, not the red uh, greeny peppers yeah no pepperoncini peppers are very good i love them like with i think everything even with pizza they but just with onions and pickles yeah. and the whole full chicago style on the poppy seed bun please mm. yeah poppy seed bun's great yeah so, so i'm will wondering we be getting those hot dogs later in this interview yes you yeah. uh at the end of this interview you're both getting hot dogs so right. yeah um who's gonna win in the hot dog eating contest because i know that's a very important aspect to this um audible original Ooh. Yeah. Um, who will it be? Will it be the janitor from the high, high Hanson High School <laughs> who has collected hundreds of hot dogs? Right. Nady, who are the other contestants? The other one is, uh, well, Richie played brilliantly by, by Brian Posehn. If you ever want to see Brian Posehn portray a high school kid, mm -hmm. uh, this is the podcast for you. Yeah. He and his fellow teammates on the bowling team uh, are the only other participants in this hot dog contest. So it's yeah. the janitor who found probably hundreds of thousands of hot dogs yeah. uh, just all around town while he was doing his cleaning. And uh, Brian Posehn and the team who found 68 hot dogs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because there's a million hot dogs hidden in the town for the hot dog day hunt right. and subsequent eating contest. It's a it's uh, yeah, it's such a fun podcast. I already heard like the first five episodes and was laughing so hard. And, you know, it's a murder wow. comedy about a small town with a dark secret. So, Nate, you know, you wrote this first and then your awesome dad, he helped you punch it up. So did you feel any pressure to get it to a place that your dad was really satisfied with? Uh, I not not especially because, you know, he's not he wasn't my editor. He's my co-writer, you know, so like I felt comfortable coming to him with bad ideas. I feel comfortable coming to my editor with bad ideas as well. Yeah. Uh, uh, so it wasn't so much, uh, is this idea good or is it bad? It's, can we make this idea good? Uh, and uh, we, yeah, worked really hard over the pandemic for it, uh, towards it. And uh, yeah, no, no, no pressure, uh, but it all turned out okay, I think, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, Bob, I can see you have an amazing relationship with your son and it translates even beautifully here and it translates so nicely in the podcast, too. And, you know, what was the process of writing with him? Was it as easy as the show feels with the flow and humor? Uh, yes, it was. Now, don't forget, uh, Summer in Argyle is pretty crazy mm -hmm. and unhinged, which I know you've heard it. Mm -hmm. And that allows a lot of freedom. When you know that you don't have a network executive sitting there going, wait a second, I've never heard of that, or that doesn't make sense, which a lot of comedy doesn't make sense. That's why it's comedy. Mm -hmm. um, but we just had such total freedom. It really reminds me of when I did Mr. Show on HBO. And the only thing the network executive said to us was, do us a favor, make sure it doesn't look like anything you could see on regular TV. And that was like the greatest ask ever. And um, and then with Tim and Eric, uh, Mike Lazo at Adult Swim was an amazing executive who also encouraged them to just do their craziest stuff. I mean, you almost couldn't be crazy enough. So um, it was really, uh, really a joy to write Summer in Argyle with my son. 
Yeah. And I love that how it like it reminds me of like those old radio shows from the 40s. Like, mind you, I listen to a lot of 40s on Junction, like the 40s Junction on Sirius. And I listen to the radio show channel. And um, I'm wondering, was that like inspiration for you guys to like, do you listen to those growing up? Yes, Bob. I, can- I absolutely love those so much. I first of all, my first love was radio. It's where I first did comedy. I used to love Bob and Ray, um, Derek and Clive, uh, the Fire Sign Theater. And um, so I, I listened to tons of comedy radio when I was a kid. And I always remember Lake Wobegon and wishing Lake Wobegon was funnier because it was like a great setup. Like, I get what you're doing. And you're setting up a town that's in the Midwest and it's kind of off kilter. But like, why don't you just go for the jugular a little more and be a little nuttier? Because, I mean, I get it. It's not that hard. The, the basic setup premise is awesome. So that's what we did here. And uh, yes, it is very much old time radio, um, which I also used to listen to with my kids in the car. And one of the reasons I wanted to do this was Nate wrote this piece, Summer in Argyle. The first draft was totally written by him. And I remember reading it and thinking, you know, you could listen to this with like a 12 year old and there's not there's no swearing in it. There's no sex in it. You know, it, it's fun and kind of got a sweet nature, which not a lot of my humor has. <laughs> right. And, you know, um, Nate, I noticed that you picked the year 2013 and I, I haven't gotten to the end of it as yet, but is there a significance to picking that one specific year that the whole story oh kind gosh. of... gosh. Wish I had an interesting answer for you. No, uh, we just <laughs> needed to... It couldn't be on... Uh, we had to place it somewhere on the X-axis. Uh, <laughs> and 2013 uh, seemed like a perfectly reasonable year. Mm-hmm. Nothing particularly controversial <laughs> happens in that right. year. Well, it wasn't going to be 2016, Mm -hmm. uh, wasn't going to be 2020. And so Uh 2013 made sense uh, by process of elimination. We've eliminated, we eliminated all the other years Mm -hmm. and 2013 was left standing. Very smart thinking. Good call. Yeah. I love the cast in this. Um, It does feel like a little Mr. Show reunion with David Cross and Paul F. Tompkins. And um, how did you guys know who to cast for these roles? Because Brian posting as Richie, when he says, I got a, I got a cool glass of orange juice at home and I'll think of you when I drink it. That just hit so hilariously. I was laughing so hard at that. Um, Like, how did you guys know who to pick for the roles? Well, it's a dream cast. Yeah, um, really Tom is. Kenny, who plays SpongeBob, is one of our voices, uh, and also a Mr. Show alumni. Uh, Jill Talley, David Cross, you already mentioned. Um, uh, Tim Robinson. I mean, it's an amazing cast. But you know what it is? Nate and I would pick out who we thought could play parts, and every one of them, I think, said yes. Which. Yeah. You know, don't forget we recorded this during the um, during the lockdown. You know, during the pandemic, yeah. so people were home and they were wanting to do something fun, yeah. and you could record this at home. And uh, so, I we just got very lucky with the cast. I yeah. mean, we really did. And people, Paul F. Tompkins is just a standout. He's so funny and great. Um, Stephanie Courtney is a standout. I think. The other thing that was amazing to me, not just who we got, but that they showed up with such good vibes and like ready to have fun. Yeah. And, you know, um, Bob, I I love you as Jeremy, the town narrator in this. Uh, There was also that part where you were stuck in the lost and found eating the chicken. I won't go into it. Mm -hmm. But um, like Nate also was that like, did you always have your dad in mind for being the voice of Argyle? Was that something that you guys? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I thought of this. Wouldn't it be funny if a town had a town narrator? Yeah. Uh, and uh, I just I thought my dad would uh, would just play it wonderfully. Uh, you know, because who is a town narrator? You don't have a template to go off of for that. And so yeah, yeah, I really I thought that um, my dad would do a great job. He of course did. Um, and I think it just meshes, not only is he the standalone good, but it just meshed really well with all of the other crazy, silly characters. Um, so if you think the town narrator is weird, there's a surgeon who's also a magician, Mm -hmm. uh, which you haven't gotten to yet, but that's episode eight. Um, uh, there's a, there's a DMV that's also a fancy restaurant. I mean, 
it's it these are pretty big uh <laughs> shoes yeah. to fill because of how crazy the world is uh and uh i think my dad just did a great job with it yeah and you know it's it's so fun i think it's so amazing and i'm wondering do you think maybe you would do like a season two for this maybe yeah yes <laughs> i i love playing jeremy the narrator if we can get enough people to um turn off their uh logic sensors and mm -hmm. and sit back and laugh yeah. um we would love to do more uh bring this town to life again and and have more fun with uh, the characters that we've already created and maybe some new uh, Looney Tunes. Yeah, that would be so great. Um, you know, just to shift gears a little bit, because I do know that you guys had like, there's more congrats in the family this month. Bob, your book came out, which oh. I love. I started reading oh. it. I got this month. Um, you know, it's such a refreshing read too. And I'm just like so excited to dive into this. I'm wondering, was what was the best part about writing this memoir? Oh, finishing it. <laughs> <laughs> finishing it. Okay. Yeah. There was like, because the stories here are so like, I feel like I've never heard some of these stories. Like the Chris Farley one, I'm so excited to read because I love Chris Farley. I've grown up with him. I grew up with SNL. So I'm just super excited to read this. Um, Nate, I'm wondering, you know, you're, you know, your dad better than anyone else. Was, were you surprised to see some of the stories in here? Like, was there anything that kind of took you back that you didn't know about? Well, you're going to have to tell me about what you thought of that book at the end. I'm excited to pick it up. Um, unfortunately, you know, I just time, you know, uh, yeah. busy guy. What can I say? You know, it's a it's a great book. Highly recommend it if you can uh, get it uh, some way, somehow. Uh, you haven't read it. You haven't read it. Yes, I have. I know the the main character's name is Bob. And <laughs> right. I know that uh, it it doesn't end well for mm -hmm. him. Uh, and Sonia, <laughs> you have to realize when mm -hmm. your dad is in showbiz or your mom, mm -hmm. you're a kid. You know, you don't want to read their goddamn memoir. You know, <laughs> right. Shut up. Shut up about your life. I heard enough about your life. Yeah. It's like the one thing you can like turn off besides <laughs> TV shows too. Like when you see your dad on TV, I'm sure you're like <laughs> turning it right off. Oh, no, it's fine. I don't mind that. I don't mind that. At all. It is a great book. I, I will say that... Um, the thing that surprised surprised me the most. Well, I've heard all these stories, uh, uh, and I'm an uncredited editor in the book. Actually, oh. um, I didn't want to take all the spotlight away from him, so I'm mm -hmm. just leave me out of it. But I did edit most of it. Um, mm -hmm. I, I will say that um, his time going from uh, Chicago over to SNL, and obviously, there's a lot in there uh, that is absolutely worth reading for somebody who aspires to be on SNL like me. Um, but um, to have that transition in life uh, is something that I'm hopefully preparing to make in the next couple of years. Uh, and I found it uh, very enlightening. Yeah, that was very helpful. Uh, yeah. 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 If Summer in Argyle is any, you know, indication of you and your success, I can definitely see you on SNL. You would fit right in. It's so great. I know that I've been such a fan of yours with Better Call Saul for years, and I'm not going to ask you for any spoilers about this, but, you know, playing this character now for more than a decade, it's been such a humbling role for you. Do you believe the fans will be satisfied with the conclusion coming up? Yeah. I think the fans of Better Call Saul are going to be very happy with how we wrap up this series. Mm -hmm. I was really pleased with it. Yeah. It's got... Uh, character growth and change and consequences and pain and i can't say any more what have you learned so much about yourself through this role of saul goodman especially like when you think back to the memoir comedy 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 drama you know well i think i have a propensity for playing drama i've certainly learned a lot about the craft of acting because I didn't have a lot of skills um, to draw on when I started. I mean, I had my moxie, <laughs> which I couldn't believe how much of it I had left after Mr. Show. Um, but outside of that, I had a lot to learn. Um, about being a person, I feel like uh, I feel badly that the character of Jimmy McGill is so driven by uh, resentment. And, and so needy of other people's affection. And I think we all are somewhat like him in that way. And it really can be a poisonous and dangerous thing. And I have that in me too. And so I guess I learned or maybe didn't learn, but contemplated a lot 
the ways in which you make choices based on resentment, which I don't, I think, and the ways in which you want other people's love and approval, which can be very dangerous. And it's, it's really important to try to be satisfied with yourself and your own efforts and not need other people's, um, certain other people's approval. You really have to find your own reason for doing what you're doing and your own value in it mm-hmm. for a lot of reasons. But Jimmy is a guy who can't do that at least not as far as you've seen him so far. Yeah. And uh, and that's a, that creates problems for him. Well, guys, thank you so much for the chat. I loved it. And I'm so excited for everyone to hear Summer in Argyle, which is out now on Audible. For more with Nate and Bob Odenkirk, keep it locked to popculture.com for the latest. <laughs> <laughs>